In Sichuan cooking, the combination of tingly Sichuan peppercorns and fiery chilies is known as ma la, or numbing heat. Now, it's a key part of a dish that you know well, Kung Pao chicken. And Elle's here, she's gonna show us how to make a great version at home. That's right, and beyond the numbing heat, Kung Pao chicken is essentially a stir fry in a flavorful sauce. One of the problems, though, with chicken stir fries is that often the chicken dries out. Mm. We're gonna solve that problem today. Okay. So we have here one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and they've been trimmed, and I'm just gonna finish this off, and they've all been cut into half inch pieces. Gotcha. I love that you use thighs instead of chicken breasts. Just a lot more flavorful and not gonna dry out, right? That's right. So I'm just slicing the chicken into about half inch strips, and then I'm gonna cut them into half inch pieces. Yeah, those tiny little pieces of chicken are definitely a hallmark of Kung Pao chicken, but I see that you have everything prepped out ahead of time. That really is key for any stir fry that you're doing. All the cooking is gonna go super fast, so it's a great idea to prep everything before you get started. Okay, so I've washed my hands, I got rid of the cutting board, it's time to make the marinade. All right. I have here some traditional ingredients, two tablespoons of soy sauce. Nice deep flavor and oh, some yeah. salt. Oh yeah one tablespoon of cornstarch. This cornstarch is really the magical ingredient. The cornstarch is gonna coat the chicken, so when it hits the heat, it's gonna create a gel around the chicken. Yeah. This is what's gonna make our sauce stick, because we don't want our sauce to be starchy and goopy. We want it to have a nice, shiny glaze. I also have one tablespoon of Chinese rice wine. And finally, half a teaspoon of white pepper. So I'm just gonna mix it well. Already this cornstarch is creating a nice glossy glaze. It's sticking right to the chicken where it should. That's right, sticking to the chicken. Sticking to the chicken. So I'm gonna set this aside and now we can start building our sauce. So we have more traditional ingredients. This is one tablespoon of black Chinese vinegar. To that, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of packed dark brown sugar, and two teaspoons of toasted sesame oil. It smells so good. So I'm gonna give that a stir just to make sure that the sugar is dissolved. Now, Chinese black vinegar is made from glutinous rice. Sometimes it's made from sorghum. It has a really deep, malty flavor. And it looks similar to balsamic, but it's not quite as sweet. So if you can't find Chinese black vinegar, the best bet is a substitute of sherry vinegar. All right, so we're gonna build the second part of our sauce. We're starting with one tablespoon of vegetable oil, two teaspoons of grated ginger, and one tablespoon of minced garlic. The oil is gonna make this spreadable. And this combination is the basis of Szechuan cooking. Yeah, it really is. I love this method because you coat everything in oil and then when you add it to a skillet, it's not gonna clump together, right? That's right. So that's all said, I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay, before we start getting into making the Kung Pao chicken, I'm just going to toast half a cup of dry roasted peanuts. I have in this nonstick skillet one teaspoon of vegetable oil. Okay. I'm just gonna toast these for about three to five minutes over medium low heat. Toasting these peanuts is gonna add an extra nice texture and flavor to our dish. They will not get soggy in the sauce. Well, you know when they're ready, when they're nice and toasty brown. So these peanuts are all set. So we're just gonna put them on a plate to cool and Set them aside. Okay. All right. Yeah, set those, those aside going? over here, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's time for us to start building the foundation for our Kung Pao sauce. So I'm just gonna take one teaspoon of Szechuan peppercorns and put it into a spice grinder. I wanna grind it coarsely so that they're easier to eat and it's gonna give us a more robust flavor. All right, just a few pulses. This is perfect. You can smell Ooh. it already. We're gonna move over to our pan. This is the same pan that we had our peanuts in over medium low heat, and I'm just going to add a tablespoon of vegetable oil. We're gonna start these peppers to pepin. <laughs> so I'm gonna add our crushed peppercorn, and I'm gonna add 15 dried arbol chilies. Ooh. And we found just like crushing the peppercorn, splitting the arbol chilies and taking the seeds out really helped them to bloom and give us better flavor. Mm. So we're just gonna let these bloom for about one to two minutes. All right. Okay, so these bloomed, they smell pretty good. I'm just gonna add our garlic ginger mixture. Nice little sizzle there. Yeah, and because we added oil, it's spreading quite easily. And we only need to let this go for about 30 seconds. Okay. Stirring pretty frequently until the clumps are gone. That looks about right. So now we can add our chicken that's been marinating. So we're gonna add the chicken and spread it to an even layer in the pan. 
Browning is not a staple of Szechuan cooking. Okay. So we don't need a lot of browning, but we do need the chicken to be done completely. So I'm gonna increase the heat to medium high, put a lid on this chicken, and let it cook for one minute. Okay. Okay, so it's been a minute. I'm just gonna take the lid off, give it a stir. So this stir allows the chicken to cook on the other side. And I'm gonna put it back in an even layer as it was before. Okay. Put the lid back on and let it cook for another minute. All right. Every time you lift the lid, it smells better and better. I know, it's so exciting. All right, so it's been a minute, it's looking good. I'm gonna add two celery stalks cut into half inch pieces. And it adds some beautiful color, a nice crunch and texture. Mm -hmm. And I think a nice cooling sensation when you're eating a little bit of chili, you know? Yes, absolutely. And I like that you added it after the chicken. A lot of recipes will add celery towards the start and you end up with overcooked celery. Yeah, that's not, not good. good. So I'm just going to keep cooking this another two to three minutes uncovered. Okay, so we're going to add the sauce, which is the staple of the dish. And because we put cornstarch on the chicken earlier, the sauce is going to stick and be so glossy and nice. so beautiful. I'm gonna stir this constantly. It just needs about three to five minutes to reduce. Gotcha. Look what we made here. Beautiful. This Kung Pao chicken is saucy, but not goopy. It's shiny and glossy and smells delicious. It's great that it's not swimming in sauce. That's right. So to finish it off, I'm gonna add five scallions that I've cut into half inch pieces. It's just the white and the light green pieces. Okay. And our toasted peanuts from earlier. Mm. Mm. And I'm just going to stir it to combine it. All right, so I'm just going to take it off the heat, and we're ready to we're eat. Done. So be sure not to eat the chilies. Yeah. OK? And don't write to us if you happen to. <laughs> and I'm serving this with white rice. That looks a little more gorgeous. There you go. All right, I'm going for the, the star of the show, the chicken. Mm. Mm. Meat is so juicy and tender. Mm. The thighs were the best selection for this dish. Mm. The flavor of the sauce is so complex. The black vinegar, the rice wine. The Szechuan peppercorns. Szechuan peppercorns. And the fact that everything was prepped to a similar size means you can do this. <laughs> Get everything on your forkful in one bite. Oh, you brought the fire. I try. Oh, that is good stuff. You're going to want to make this Kung Pao at home, and it starts with classic stir-fry prep. Toss chicken thighs with soy sauce and cornstarch, then make a sauce with Chinese black vinegar, brown sugar, and sesame oil. Grind, then cook Sichuan peppercorns with arbol chilies, then add garlic and ginger. Cook the chicken, add celery, and the sauce. Stir in scallions and toasted peanuts, and serve with white rice. So from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, the fiery, tingly, so good, Kung Pao chicken. Mmm, I think we could go into business with this. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.